If you are interested in seeing what I grow in a fully container garden in San Francisco, California zone 10, keep watching. Just so you have a sense of my growing conditions, I'm growing on a patch of concrete atop my apartment complex. I primarily garden in containers. I have food grade buckets as well as grow bags. These are my main gardening beds. I'm growing in the city of San Francisco where microclimates are king. What that basically means is that each neighborhood has their own distinct growing conditions and you can walk over to the next neighborhood and they will have a completely different temperature and climate. For me, my microclimate is quite foggy and shady. There are moments of sun throughout the day, but unfortunately my patch of concrete is obstructed by a building, meaning I only get at most four hours of direct sunlight a day, if that. But I have had no problems growing food in that little patch of concrete. In fact, last year was quite a productive garden for me. So I'm hoping that you watching this video and you don't have that much space or maybe you can only grow in containers i hope that you're encouraged by this video because there are a lot of things we can grow in front of me i have a standard 10 by 20 bottom tray and on top i just have these leftover nine cell trays for the most part it fits into a perfect grid when i was first starting out i didn't understand why i needed a bottom tray but now after a few years i realized these seeds are quite sensitive when they're their initial stages so being able to bottom water via this bottom tray is actually very helpful this is my setup. It is left over from last year. I think in the future I want to either get reusable silicone trays or buy more sturdy ones because these are quite flimsy but you make do with what you have and I've already kind of pre-labeled the cells with what I want to put in them. I will provide links down below of either what I use specifically or any items that are similar to what I use. That way if you are just starting out or you're in the market for any equipment you'll see what I have and maybe that'll inspire you. Before we get started on seed planting I wanted to share with you my seeds one the seeds that I have been successfully able to grow in the winter time two seeds that I'm still learning how to master but I'm going to try to grow again this year and lastly new seeds that I purchased for this growing season I do have a few seeds that I've direct sown a couple days ago that always do really well for me the first one is white icicle radish or daikon I found these seeds from grocery outlet and they were 99 cents and fully organic what I like about this daikon in particular is they are a lot smaller than your standard daikon. In fact, they almost look like carrots. They grow way faster than regular sized radishes and they are perfect for the winter time because they can tolerate frost and cool temperatures. Next up, I have another seed packet from Grocery Outlet, which is Mammoth Melting Sugar Pea. If you are on a budget and you can't really afford to go on these websites where they have really fancy seeds, go try Grocery Outlet because they have a lot of organic seeds that have a really high germination rate. I like these Mammoth Melting Sugar Peas. They are very prolific in my garden. There was a time in the winter when we would step outside and we would just pick off a few sugar peas peas every day. What I love about gardening is that it has opened up my palate to so many things that I don't try that often, including sugar peas. This is frost tolerant and really good during the fog. Lastly, I love growing fava beans. This one is the early Robin Hood fava beans from Renee Seeds. I had only tried fava beans one time on my vacation in Santorini and they were scrumptious. And so when I found out that they grew here, I was very excited to grow them. It makes a lot of sense though because San Francisco is considered a Mediterranean coastal climate much like Greece. Again, they can tolerate the frost. Really in San Francisco we don't get snow but it does get quite cold here sometimes. For example, yesterday in the morning it was about 39 degrees and I know a lot of you out there living you know in Chicago or like places where it actually snows you're like that's spring but for us that's quite cold and so I really appreciate that this actually thrives in our sense of frost. In fact it actually does slow down in growth once it gets warmer so this is the perfect December to February crop. This one in particular is a dwarf bushy variety but I know that there are other types of olive beans out there. I'm almost out of the seed bag so I'm very excited to try the different varieties once I'm done with this. Moving on to what I sow indoors that have really been successful for me in the December through February period. Starting off with my most successful crops I have the Chiji Masai and Mizuna specifically the Benihoshi. 
What I love about Mizuna is that they are extremely prolific, which is really needed in a small container garden. Pretty much just harvest it as a cut and come again crop. Just take from the outside and within a few days, more has grown in its place on the inside. And so it's really good for a small garden or if you don't have a lot of space and you want to have as much yield as possible, Benny Hoshi is where it's at. Essentially, I just leave it alone and it just grows. The same is true for Chiji Masai. It reminds me of a densely packed bok choy. It's a very low maintenance plant. All you have to do is put it outside after you've grown it indoors. I haven't tried direct sowing this, but maybe you can do that as well. But essentially once it gets going and gets going, it grows so fast. I remember I had planted it and within two weeks it was massive. You can also harvest this as a cut and come again crop, but I just like to wait until it's a full circle and I just chop it all off. I feel like it's so satisfying. The next couple of greens I feel like are heavy hitters in a lot of people's gardens, not just in San Francisco. They are lettuce and kale. For me, I have the Merlot lettuce as well as a mixed bag of seeds from botanical interests. They're frost tolerant. In fact, it's almost better to grow them in colder seasons because you avoid all the aphids that come in the springtime when it gets warmer. I find that when I grow them earlier on in the year or at least in December, I don't have as many pest problems with them and that way they can get really big and I can harvest them as much as possible before the inevitable doom and gloom of the aphids in the spring. This bag of botanical interests have lasted me so many years they still germinate so i'm gonna keep planting them until they no longer germinate if you've seen my last gardening video you know that i had a ton of shiso slash perilla in my garden it is part of the mint family but it's called the japanese basil it tastes a little bit of both it's a very complex herb i'm going to primarily use this as a companion plant for all of my other plants a lot of pests don't like basil or mint so this has a little bit of both so i'm hoping to really deter pests in my garden this year a lot of people would say to keep mint in a separate container because they spread so easily, but I haven't had that problem. I'm going to just interplant them and see what happens. Lastly, I have some bunching onions. I have the Italian red of Florence variety as well as white Lisbon. What is so funny is my household isn't a big fan of onions, but I grow so many of them every year, primarily as a way to deter pests in the garden. I just interplant them in so many different spaces and because they are so compact, I can really get away with just cramming them in every bed. And moving on to crops that I haven't quite mastered yet, but I'm going to try again this year. Starting off with the purple lady bok choy. Now, I feel like this had a lot of potential. Last year, I think I was still trying to figure out where to put things as well as how many of each to put into the containers. So I feel like with the bok choy that I had last year, I think I moved them a little bit too often and I think they got a little sensitive from that and they didn't grow as big as I wanted them to grow. So this year, I'm just going to leave them be once I put them outside and see how big they can get. But these are quite tasty and I love that they're they're purple. It's different for everybody. For me, I don't like growing things that I can find in the grocery store because why don't I just buy them from the grocery store instead of taking all this time and effort. I have some beets. The ones I'm trying this year are golden beets. This is actually so funny because I think I finally mastered how to grow beets, but before I could harvest them, they were eaten by rats. <laughs> so, um... This year I have netting and everything, so I'm hoping that the rats don't get to this before I do. I had the most beautiful orange Swiss chard last year, but decimated, decimated by earwigs. So hopefully I'm able to get some orange ones this year. Lastly, I have some new seeds that I purchased this year, not just for the winter season, but for this 2023 growing season in general. The first one I have is the Chinese pink celery. I don't know about you, but Whenever I buy celery from the grocery store, all we need are a few stalks and the rest actually go bad because we don't use celery that often in the kitchen. And so I'm really excited to just grow these outside and be able to just take a few at a time if I'm able to grow it. This is really going to help us prevent food waste. Always hurts my soul every time we have to throw away celery stalks, but you always need it in certain recipes. And I love that these are in a beautiful pink color. Again, growing varieties that I don't see in the grocery store is a real motivating factor for me. <laughs> 
Next up, we have the dragon's egg cucumber. I have never seen a non-green cucumber before, have you? I was really intrigued by the white color, but I like these because they are a little bit smaller than I think a standard cucumber. They're just a little bit larger than an egg. I tried growing cucumbers last year, but they didn't really take off for me. And I wonder if it's because the variety that I was trying to grow was actually too big for my growing conditions in the sense that I think I needed more light and maybe even more room to grow them so i'm excited to try these smaller variety to see if i'm more successful this time i have this sugar magnolia tendril peas like i mentioned i have been put on peas by grocery outlet so i thought i would try out a different variety as well as the one that i already have outside i love these because they are purple i know it just sounds so dumb to be like planting things because of a color but i think you really just have to find ways to motivate yourself in the garden because gardening is hard work and you'll run into so many problems so being able to grow something that you won't normally find at a grocery store easily will help you actually grow them so at least that's for me for this video i'm going to put them outside next up i have the tennis ball lettuce i tried to grow romaine lettuce last year but i think it's one of those things where the variety was a little too big for what i wanted i feel like my romaine lettuce lasted for like most of spring and the harvest was meh when you only have so much space you really want to maximize what you have the tennis ball lettuce will be a better fit just because i'm able to have a higher production rate and I can easily like boom 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 switch them out if needed. I have the Sun Gold Select 2 and then I also have the Brad's Atomic Grape. These are two tomatoes that I feel like are quite popular in the gardening community especially in San Francisco and I've just never tried them before so I'm excited to give it a go. I heard Sun Gold is life-changing so I'm excited to have my life changed and then lastly I have these free seeds. They almost remind me of currants but I don't know if I'm gonna grow these just because again I have such limited space and I already have two new cherry tomatoes in addition to the other cherry tomatoes that I want to grow again this year. I'm still waiting for another seed order. I thought these were the only ones that I was going to buy this year, but upon further research, I bought more. I am finally ready to venture out into the world of flowers. When you have such a small space, you almost feel this urge to make sure that like every corner counts. And so for me, that meant only growing food that I can eat. But as the years have gone by, I've realized that other things are important as well, including flowers. One, because it's going to add more beauty to the garden. Not to say that vegetables aren't beautiful to look at. Two, I'm excited to increase biodiversity in my little garden. I know that I'm in an urban setting, but there are a lot of things I can do to encourage pollinators, beneficial insects, ward off diseases by having so many different crops in such a small space versus, you know, monoculture where it's just like all lettuce at once. That can really decimate your crops really easily and just impact the soil long term and things like that. So I've been just trying to educate myself a little bit more on biodiversity in an urban setting. So I'm excited to keep learning and keep growing and hopefully pass on that information to you. I purchased some lavender, a really cool pink variety as well well nasturtium sunflowers cosmos i'm also trying out dill as a companion plant for a lot of my vegetables again to deter pests but also dill is quite nice to have in the garden and i also purchased a dwarf basil it is the same variety as the basil that i've tried before which is the italian kind that one is too big for my garden climate and so i'm hoping that a more petite variety will be more forgiving to the fog and to the lack of sunlight for some reason i'm more excited for my garden than chris this year. It's just something that I've been thinking about all month long and I'm finally excited to make this video because that means that I'll have my indoor setup ready. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start going. Now I have my beets here and I'm going to start them indoors contrary to what I think is a popular belief that all root vegetables should be started outside and directly sown. For me, I've tried both ways and I actually found that they are more successful when I grow them inside. Maybe it's something to do with my climate, maybe it's a little too foggy and cold outside, but I plant them inside and I make sure that they are transported outside before they get too large and two, that I don't disturb the roots too much. When you make sure those two things happen, it's not really an issue that you start them indoors versus outdoors because how would root vegetables know that they have been started outside versus inside? aside from the fact that they are significantly more comfortable. So I am trying out the Charles Dowding method this year, which is essentially multi-sowing multiple beet seeds in a singular cell and growing them in that way as well. The idea is that each beet seed already has multiple beets in it. So beets are quite used to growing compactly. When I watch these videos, they 
look fine to me so <laughs> i'm really hoping that mine will turn out fine this year if not then you know i'll go back to fewer at a time but why not try and see if you are a beginner gardener and don't know where to start i would recommend doing some research on your microclimate and finding gardeners in that exact microclimate and essentially copying what they do <laughs> each gardener is different and even though they are in the exact same growing climate as you it's possible that you know you get different results depending on the soil you use equipment sunlight things like that but starting out with things that have been successful for other people in a very similar microclimate as you can really help you i think when you're a new gardener it feels so overwhelming there are just so many different ways to do things so many crops you can grow da -da 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 -da. so being able to find easy wins in the garden will allow you to build your confidence especially as you're first starting out which will allow you to be more experimental in future years as well as more resilient if you grow something your first year and it pops up and you're able to harvest something really tasty you're gonna feel like okay this isn't so hard i got this and that's really important to have because another thing that i learned as a gardener is it's not if you're gonna run into some issues it's when and in what capacity i used to be in academia and i feel like gardening is very similar to scientific research in that it's a constant cycle of trial and error even when there are things that you think you know how to grow climates change certain years are cold than others you have more pests one year than another year so you're constantly just trying something out and iterating whenever it doesn't work out so it's really important to have a good mindset when you're a gardener and i actually found that it's not about having a green thumb but it's about going through these challenges and having a positive mindset and thinking okay what can i learn right now that'll help me how can i improve it a little bit next time last year i feel like i went through a lot of issues with my garden one because because I was getting married internationally and so I had a lot of things that I was dealing with and I couldn't tend to my garden as often as I did when I wasn't planning a wedding but last year I had a really bad rat problem if, again if you watch my other video you saw just how much of my crops were eaten by rats and I know actually a lot of San Francisco gardeners had horrible rat issues last year as well but this year I bought some netting and I'm going to experiment with some ways to cover my grow bags see what I can do about the rats even though they are my mortal enemy I hate them but yeah it's like that could have easily deterred me from gardening again i hear so many people being like you can't grow in the fog you can't grow that in containers you can't do this you can't do that then don't do it don't do it yourself then but i'm gonna do it and in fact i've been able to grow so many things that people say i can't grow if you're from a very similar microclimate your conditions are so very different than somebody else's so it's possible that you could do something and make it work but you never know until you try. I'm fairly confident in tomato growing in San Francisco, even though a lot of people say you can't. It's possible that, yeah, you're not going to be able to grow like all types of tomatoes or all types of that thing that you want to grow. But I think if you're strategic about the variety that you grow, it is 100% still possible. For example, if you have a smaller garden, maybe try growing a dwarf variety or a bush variety or something that is just in general more petite. If you're growing in a colder climate, try finding seeds that originated from other colder climates maybe that'll help you or you know there's just so many things you can do to still grow the things you want to grow in the space that you have but you never know until you try it once you build your confidence growing easy crops then you can have the guts but to grow other things and then you'll know if you can grow them or not in general over the years i've been trying to find a balance between growing as many things as possible and understanding that some plants need a little bit more space to survive and thrive but for the most part seed packets or general instructions online are a little bit more conservative than they need to be in terms of growing spacing for example last year i grew so many brassicas in a 10 gallon container than other people would recommend online they all grew quite large cram that shit in there the more better and if they end up a little bit smaller than you want them to then the following year you can decrease you know but i just i tend to overpopulate <laughs> maybe that's a problem but i haven't seen any issues in terms of disease or general wellness of the plant outside of the fact that they can get a little bit smaller than you know if you had planted fewer in the same area but i kind of like that because i love i'm trying to like i said i'm trying to maximize my growing space so the more i can grow in one area the better i'll have to say i've planted like 20 
20 green onion seeds in each cell, maybe more. I don't know, I just closed my eyes and <laughs> hope for the best. Onions, honestly, at least bunching onions, they are very low maintenance. They don't care. They will grow in anything, anywhere. In fact, when I was cleaning out my garden, preparation for the winter greens and stuff like that, I found so many onions just still doing their thing, even though I haven't watered them since July. <laughs> they don't need a lot. They're just happy to be there, you know? They're, they're only there for the vibes. <laughs> honestly, this is really exciting. It's gone really much faster than I thought it was gonna go, but I think it's because I'm talking to a friend and it almost feels like I'm just shooting the shit with a fellow gardener, even though I don't know if you garden. Do you garden? <laughs> if you do, what do you plant? What growing zone are you? And what is your favorite crop to grow? I'd love to know. I'm almost done. I'm really trying to be more self-sufficient as the years go by. I wanna to get to a point where I don't buy any crops from the grocery store at all. And last year, we were able to drastically cut the amount of vegetables we bought at the grocery store. In fact, there was a period when we didn't buy greens at all from the grocery store. And so I'm hoping to get closer and closer to self-sufficiency as the years go by. That completes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, bye. She went away on Christmas Day Didn't come back till